Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where a rude entitled mother gets herself kicked off a plane. Another Karen on a plane post reminded me of this lovely experience last month. Due to a new procurement process issue at work nobody really cares about, I booked a flight to my conference destination really late. All that was left were middle seats, or ponying up personally for an upgrade, which wasn't going to happen for a relatively short flight. Out in the boarding area, they announced many, many times that it was a full flight and kept begging people to gate check their bags. It wasn't subtle. After they let all the military, first class, frequent flyers, and blah blah need more time people board, my group got to plod down the jetway. Once we got into the plane, I could see my fate before me. A wild Karen was sitting in the aisle seat. The middle was piled with Karen garbage. Backpack, electronic devices, stuffed animals, snacks, etc. And a miniature Karen was over in the window seat, happily kicking the empty seat in front of her so hard, it was visibly shaking. Joy. That's, I count the rows, definitely mine. When I got to the row, I pointed to the middle seat to indicate it's mine. Karen didn't budge or move a single thing from that garbage pile. I tried again with the whole, sorry, that's my seat routine. She snapped at me, sit somewhere else. I'm all, can't do that, full flight. This is my assigned seat. Well, Karen wasn't having that. Did I know what kind of day she'd had? It had started the day before, their flight was diverted. They missed their connection. They slept in the airport overnight. They just need a little space. Sit somewhere else. And she shoved her knees fully up against the seat in front of her, blocking my way into the sucky even before she loaded it with Karen stuff, middle seat. Then she shut her eyes and pretended to be asleep. I slammed the flight attendant button over her head and awkwardly crouched in the row behind so people can get past. We'd already made a scene and clogged up boarding. As I crouched there, I realized nothing about Karen's story made sense. We weren't at the big city airport where flights sometimes did get diverted. We were at the tiny regional airport that only had a couple airlines that flew to a few major hubs. No connections happened here. There also weren't a bunch of other people griping about misconnections, diversions, or having slept in the airport. When a tiny regional airport has that happen, you know. Everybody knows. Karen was probably full of garbage. Anyhow, the saintly flight attendant arrived to ask what was wrong. She checked my ticket. Yeah, that was, unfortunately, my seat. Then she asked Karen to see her and the kids' tickets. Karen kept her eyes closed and continued to pretend to be asleep. I don't know how she thought that would work, but the flight attendant shook her shoulder several times and kept speaking loudly to her. You must remember, boarding is going on all around this. People were hefting bags, trying to find seats, and the usual loud mayhem. It was ridiculous. Flight attendant finally told Karen that if she didn't respond, paramedics would be called about an unresponsive passenger. That got Karen's attention. She popped up and demanded, What? I'm trying to sleep. And then went off on the same rant she did at me about her travel nightmare and needing the space. The flight attendant explained that it was a full flight, all the seats were booked. Standby passengers were waiting for any extras and Karen needed to let me sit. This sent Karen into wails over being separated from her baby by a stranger. The flight attendant pointed out that she booked the aisle and window seats herself, leaving that separation. So she could either ask me to swap or sit in them as assigned. That set off another rant. Apparently, some frequent flyer and travel advice website out there says to book the window and aisle and hope nobody sits in the middle so you get free space. I imagine this works on flights that aren't full. This one was full. Karen swore she got that tip for how to get an extra seat free off airline's website and threw quite a fit that after they told her to do that, she was being punished by being separated from her baby. Meanwhile, the people in the row in front arrived and Minnie Karen was still kicking away like she was at soccer practice. 
It was so bad, the guy in the window seat didn't even want to sit down. He leaned over and asked the kid to stop kicking. <laughs> Minnie Karen let out an unholy wail of STRANGER that she had apparently been trained to do if a stranger spoke to her. Karen turned from her screaming fit at the flight attendant to take in the scene of an adult man the row in front, looking at her child in horror and the child wailing, STRANGER, at the top of her lungs, only to turn right back to the flight attendant while pointing at the dude and demanding, GET THIS PEDOPHILE OFF THIS PLANE IMMEDIATELY! That's where a flight attendant went from firm and reasonable to utterly brilliant. She sagely nodded at Karen. We can't remove him from the flight because he hasn't done anything to your child, but we can certainly get you to reseat it if you're not comfortable with your current location and situation. Gather your things. We'll take you up to the desk and see if there are any upgrades available to the more spacious seats. It was amazing. Karen puffed up in self-importance as she gathered her now happy spawn and all their junk. She threw elbows like mad, shoving her way upstream past all the people still trying to board. She heard the magic word upgrade and she was going to get there before it was gone. I sort of cursed to myself that they probably were upgrading her to make her calm the flip down and was not thrilled that her ridiculous display worked. Then, flight attendant's coworker came back to ask if I preferred the window or aisle to my middle seat. Aisle, thanks. At least I got that, right? It got better. Flight attendant's coworker explained that I could relax because Karen, an entitled kid, would not be returning. There were no upgrades. It was faster and easier to get them off the flight that way than calling security. They filled the seats with waiting standby passengers. And presumably, Karen had plenty of space to sit next to her mini Karen in the terminal while waiting for the next flight. Well played, saintly flight attendant. Well played. Our next Reddit post is from Cinnamon Evie. This happened back in February. This was my first Comic Con, and I had the exact appearance of a teenage geeky girl who has no idea what's going on and what she's actually supposed to bring with her. I wore an Espeon onesie, here's what it looked like. A purple spotty backpack, to store spare clothes and merch that I would be buying, and a little Pokeball purse slung over my shoulder with a little Espeon plush sitting inside with its head sticking out like a chihuahua. So yeah, I looked cuddly to say the least. I stood out a little compared to the more professional cosplayers. I arrived early, so the doors weren't open yet. My friends that were also going didn't arrive yet either. I saw a white car park on the other side of the road. An entitled mother got out with her kid and walked to the queue and started to point and laugh at the crowd at the door. People had to go past her to get to the door, so she'd stop people and laugh at them, calling them deadbeats and man-children, which was completely false. There were parents with young children who were dressed up, not just teenagers and adults, and elbowing entitled kid saying things like, Aren't you lucky that you don't have to embarrass yourself in public like this? People were mostly ignoring her and muttering to themselves. It was freaking bizarre. She looked straight at me and berated me for wearing pajamas as my costume and called me lazy for not having a proper cosplay. Then it happened, my saviors. A married couple, I saw the rings. Dressed as Jafar from Aladdin and Rose Quartz from Steven Universe showed up. Now, these guys were professional. They looked like they'd been to dozens of Comic Cons. They later won the costume contest. Entitled Mother starts her mocking, but then Jafar absolutely exploded at her. Other people started to join in and they all jeered at her for having nothing better to do since she's the one who drove out just so she could make fun of people who just wanted to enjoy an event. Entitled Mother goes red in the face, drags Entitled Kid off and drives away. Freaking bizarre. I told my friends about it later and we all had a laugh. It's 2019. Who makes fun of geeks and nerds for being into geeky and nerdy stuff? What? That's not even a dirty word anymore. This is the most 1990 thing I've ever read. Game of Thrones is mainstream. Avengers is the most profitable movie in history. 
Pokemon is the most profitable video game franchise in the world. Like, this, <laughs> this woman is living in the past. Our next Reddit post is from Dark Starlet Lol. My daughter's birthday is tomorrow, but because we're also headed away on a long car journey for our holiday, we decided to have a mommy-daughter tea and cake thing at a local cafe. She is a very kind girl and loves to help me out, particularly since she found out I was pregnant. She wanted to help me hold the tray for our food and drinks. It's not very busy, so I let her hold the whole thing while we walk over to the counter with the cakes on it. She puts it up on the side and points out which cake she would like. Once we have our choices, we both push the tray along together so there's no spills. When it comes time to pick a drink, the apple juice she wants is in the top of the refrigerated shelves. I take my hand off the tray and lean up to pick one up. I trust my daughter not to tip over the tray. In the single second I look up to grab the carton, there's movement at my side and my daughter starts shouting and crying. I turn to see some woman pulling the tray with our cakes on it away from her, and my daughter is holding on to it still. As I'm about to shout at this woman, she shoves the tray back and forth, basically fleeing my daughter to the floor. And the cakes also fall to the floor, plate smashing. She couldn't be bothered to get her own tray, so she stole ours. My daughter is really crying at this point, and I hastily kick the shattered bits of plate aside with my foot so I can crouch down to help her out without hurting either of us. This jerk then had the audacity to try to lecture me on how I shouldn't let my daughter play with trays by herself. Because it's dangerous and she could hurt herself. And look what she's already done and I should be ashamed of myself. I effing explode. I turn on this woman, absolutely livid. And I think the look on my face must have given her pause because she stopped trying to walk away with the tray and blinked stupidly at me. How dare you! I don't think my voice has ever been so deep and menacing. It attracts the attention of the staff and another woman with her two sons who look to be about 11 and 14. She doesn't just walk over, she storms. She's pretty fit looking in general, but her arms, holy moly. She rips the tray out of this woman's hands and wrenches her arm behind her back, then pins her in place against the glass of the cake display. The entitled mother is shouting in pain, and after a few moments, a girl about 15 years old comes out of the seating area, her daughter. The staff call the police, and one rushes over with a broom and a first aid kit. She cleans up all the plate shards and cake splatters and helps me look over my daughter for cuts, etc. The whole time, Entitled Mother is screaming about how she's being assaulted for no reason. How I was the thief, and my three about to turn four year old is a thief in training. It takes about three or four minutes for the police to show up. The station is literally on the other side of the main road behind the shop with the cafe. As they arrive, the Entitled Mother starts screaming at them to help her, that she's being attacked for no reason. The mama bear explains the situation calmly. I'm too busy trying to console my daughter. We both bruise like peaches and I can already see the red mark covering the back of her thighs. She's gonna be black and blue soon enough. I'm very hormonal right now, so as much as I'm angry, I'm also crying at this point. The police, realizing that I'm pregnant and stressed and that my daughter has sustained an injury, call an ambulance to ensure that we're both okay. Once we're at the hospital, we're both looked over and the doctors confirm that my daughter is going to have the bruise to end all bruises over her legs and bum. Aside from being stressed, I'm given the all clear and then an officer appears to take my statement. They tell me the woman was arrested and that Mama Bear, the staff of the cafe, and Entitled Mother's own daughter gave statements against her. They've also got camera footage of the whole thing from the cafe. I give my statement and am then able to take my daughter home. Our happy cake time is ruined. And now she's got to sit in the car on a massive painful bruise for the eight plus hours we're going to be on the road. I am so angry. Even just writing this, I have to keep taking a few moments to not cry again. I just, I know these entitled buttholes are out there and I can deal with sucky comments and so on, but this woman assaulted my daughter and didn't give a flying flip. I have no idea what I would have done if Mama Bear hadn't come over when she did, but I am certain that there would have been bloodshed. 
I was so ready to rip her face off with my bare hands. Today and tomorrow were supposed to be so happy. It's her freaking birthday. And now she's going to be in pain and there's nothing I can do about it. You bet your butt I'm going to take her for all I can. But I've got to go on my holiday first. Police have assured me that with the evidence and witness statements, this is almost certainly going to be a court case for child abuse. It's likely going to take a little while to sort things out. Paperwork, I guess. I've never been to court before, so I'm not sure what to expect. I'm away 10 days, so I don't know how quickly things will be processed, but I've been told that the police will be in touch with me if they need anything more, and provided me with some contacts for appropriate lawyers should I need them. There was more, but I can barely think straight right now. My daughter is fine and napping right now, but I'm still just so overwhelmed by this incident. If I see that woman about any time soon, I think I'll actually kill her. I don't know about you guys, but I am so looking forward to OP's update when she tells us what happens to this entitled mother when she gets convicted of child abuse. So if you want to find out what happens to this entitled parent, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you will catch the update video. That was r slash entitled parents. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because it really helps me out.